Welcome to the Animation Happy Hour, a podcast where we talk about the animation industry over a couple of drinks. All opinions and views expressed in this podcast are solely our own and not representative of the companies for whom we work. My name is Katie. I'm Ben. And I'm Garrett. And, and we are all... <laughs> we almost <laughs> said it. <laughs> we are all currently feature film animators working in Los Angeles. You know, Very that's good. funny. It reminded me, remember that blooper I animated? Wasn't it the same? Oh, thing? yeah. Yes. It was you two again. <laughs> yeah, we, we thought we would do it. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So today we're sipping on accessoritas. Oh, must have accessoritas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because our topic is. It is kind of our, so what exactly we're we going to call it? Like things we can't live without or accessories that we love. This is loosely inspired by GQ's 10 <laughs> things, whatever celebrity can't live without. And I've always thought our podcast is very much like GQ. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we're going to be generally talking about some um, kind of accessories we use at work it'll be kind of a lighter more fun episode we think after kind of Heaviness. our somewhat oh. heavier <laughs> last one yeah about mental health <laughs> um so yeah we're just going to be given tips and things like you know whatever it is little things we we love having at our setup and creature comforts um that we that what we enjoy while we're working yeah this topic makes me laugh because um i think it's fairly universal that you'll like see an artist being interviewed or something and somebody always asks like oh what pencil do you use or what pen do you use or whatever and there's sort of this idea of like well it's not really the pencil that makes the artist great it's the you know what the artist does with the pencil mm -hmm. but you know what today we're just gonna lean into what pencil do you use <laughs> <Yeah, that's not laughs> because that stuff's fun to talk about um and it does help at the end of yeah. the day to feel like you're in the zone and whatever whatever little accessory you need to get the job done has some value <laughs> I would totally agree. I would say hey, it doesn't not matter. It's <laughs> it's definitely not the most important thing, but it's it's something, you know. So yeah, and we're not sponsored by anything. So I don't know, uh, yeah, an opportunity for us. Yeah, we have so many affiliate links. Yeah, we really should. If anybody's it. listening from anything we plug, please do reach out. But <laughs> That's right. But it's all authentically recommended. That's how you know it's it's true. Yeah, that's we don't actually that's that right. We wanted to do this episode before we were sponsored by anyone just to make sure that it's, you know, totally uh yeah. pure and unbiased. We had some other drink names too. That Oh. <laughs> we almost went. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go on. <laughs> we talked about the bells and whistles, which <laughs> I, I'll i just admit, I misremembered the name that Ben and I brainstormed on our own. And then we were pitching drink names to Garrett at lunch one day. And I was like, I think it's bells and wet your willies. <laughs> and, I was like, wait. and then they started laughing and I didn't realize what I had said. Going to get an explicit rate. I, know. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh no, bell and wet your whistle. Yeah. But, um because of the you know these are the we're plugging the various bells and whistles that we like to have around but sure um for the radio sure there's should have went with the, <laughs> the yeah but your whistles dang it yeah i think there i'm not a thousand percent sure i think there was a drink company in savannah called wet willies that oh. it's like frozen margaritas and things which oh. is what we're drinking by the way we oh yeah they're delicious i yeah. will say you guys did a oh, great, job. great. I don't know. thank you very it is a very standard margarita that you Google, <laughs> and it's one of the first three results. And you then spice it up with some strawberries. And then blend it with strawberries. <laughs> That's what we did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, so with the episode today, we wanted to do a few, a few caveats, and we'll probably pepper these throughout the episode as well. But a lot of these things, we're going to be probably talking about things that vary in price like an insane amount from like little things that like anyone can afford or or incorporate in their workflow or whatever and then kind of more <laughs> bougie <laughs> stuff <laughs> stuff we enjoy and we want to caveat Our all bridge. of this with uh you know like katie said i think it's it's good to fold into this that it's not all about the pencil you're using yeah. narratively <laughs> speaking um so you can do beautiful great work with very basic equipment yes but we just kind of wanted to to have one where we talk about the the stuff we enjoy, uh, but we acknowledge where 
<laughs> very privileged in that. And um, yeah, to that end, I guess we can get right into it. I'll give a brief summary and say, overall, we're going to kind of cover physical equipment for your setup, some like digital software stuff, and then some miscellaneous things, and then we'll finish it up with the fun topic, some duds, some yeah. things we, we've <laughs> some tried. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> some things we maybe splurged on and then didn't like or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. And I'm sure there will be some cross-pollination with exactly what's digital versus miscellaneous, but mm. that's what we're going to chat about. Very fun. Are we starting Indeed. with physical? <laughs> <laughs> I think I had physical down first, but how do you guys feel? Is that okay? Let's get physical. Let's get <laughs> nice. That's why I was all to set up Katie for that, that joke. Did you guys plan that? <laughs> no, that's just the margarita or ex Sarita talking. Yeah, Sarita. <laughs> Uh, well, I, f I, g I guess I'll go. I, <laughs> I don't know. We kind of looked at you. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, all right. Well, the first thing I have down, and this is a little bit, I feel like it's semi-cop out, but I'm just going to say it. My iPhone has become uh -oh. indispensable. And the reason why is I use it every day because I use it for video reference mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And this is, I mean... Maybe this is kind of a dumb one. You guys can call me out on it. Because, but <laughs> no. I feel like you, your phone, because it's so uh, convenient to take reference and stuff, it's really useful. I also use yeah. it for reminders. I have an mm -hmm. app called, like, it's called Do, and it gives you, like, a recurring set of uh, reminders for myself. Also, my calendar's on there, um, all that stuff. So maybe that's kind of an obvious one, but I, I no. do think having, like, uh, an iPhone has been indispensable for me. Oh, that's cool. That's great. You know what? Actually, I'll piggyback off of it. And this is, um, I gave the warning about bougie stuff. This is bougie <laughs> to the max, especially if you're only using it for this thing. <laughs> but I have an Apple Watch, which again, I'm cringing just saying that for because I know it's very expensive for if you're a student or something. Um, but I do love using it with my iPhone specifically for video reference mm -hmm. um, because it can connect to the camera on there. So I love, I'll set up my phone on a tripod and then it drives me crazy. Every now and then it would happen to me where I would go, I would shoot reference and I was like, oh man, that's it. That's the take. And then for the last like third of the shot, I'm off screen oh. or like oh, half no. on screen, half <laughs> off. Yeah. So I love um, being able to like set up the tripod and then go and then on the iPhone you can connect to the, or on the Apple Watch you can connect to your phone and see a live feed of what like the camera is seeing. So you can make sure you're super centered and you're not going to go too far. You can kind of test out, okay, how many steps can I take in each way? Um, yeah. that's really again, probably not worth getting an Apple watch just for that, <laughs> but it's a, it's a <laughs> great nice little, perk. Perk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like smartphones in general are like pretty crucial to like function at a studio because I feel like most studios use Slack as like a base form of communication and you really do kind of want to be on the ball with that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you would have it on your base computer too, but say you're, I don't know, in a meeting or you're not at your desktop for whatever reason, you probably want access to those notifications. So yeah, pretty, pretty crucial. Yeah. I guess like I don't see often too many people like with one of those like flip phones anymore. I feel like <laughs> most people now have smartphones, which is why I'm like, oh, maybe that's not you know, the best one cool. to say. I but. think it's helpful to, to talk about like how you use it for yeah. sure. Like yeah. Slack yeah, stuff and then video huge. reference. And yeah, I think that's great. Calendar reminders, especially yeah. as things get more hectic. I think we all know how easy it is to like, like, okay, I have a meeting in 15 minutes. I'm just going to animate for 10. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you look at your clock, you're like, oh shit, that was yeah. 20 minutes ago. <laughs> like now, you know, late for the meeting. Um, so I'm so pro like the setting crazy amounts of reminders and stuff because you never know when you're going to get in the flow and, and miss everything. <laughs> oh, that made me think of one feature actually that I use a lot with, um, iPhone, like iOS, it's focus modes. I don't oh, know if you guys cool. have played with that, mm. yeah. but uh, you can like set, like, obviously do not disturb is like one that everyone has, mm -hmm. but, uh, I use, I have a work focus mode and then like my own personal one and you can set a schedule for your focus mode. So if, during Monday through Friday, like, mm -hmm. you know, nine to six, I have my work focus mode on, which gives me Slack notifications. Um, it also turns my email to Gmail, which is like my work email. And then okay. my, I'm on my personal, it's my just normal Apple mail. So basically when I'm not in my work focus mode, 
I don't get any slacks. I don't get That's any cool. emails, which has made an actual huge difference because with like the pandemic and working from home, like the separation yeah. between like work and, you know, mm. personal stuff mm-hmm. has been not good. But I learned this actually. Isabel's brother was like telling me about focus modes was like a new thing. And I'm like now obsessed with it. So, oh, that's pro cool. Time. Yeah, I hadn't done that. <laughs> that's I awesome. just sort of like manually done it, I guess, by setting like do not disturb on Slack times or whatever. But I want to do it for real. It's, <laughs> it's really cool. cool. Yeah. That's cool. awesome. Pro tip. Wow. <laughs> that is a pro tip. But I want to hear from you guys. What's some physical oh. stuff you got? <laughs> Getting physical. I like. I think we named that subcategory correctly. Yeah. Physical. Tell you what. I'll do a quick follow up of just because I feel self conscious about my bougie stuff with a cheapy thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the cheapest, but pretty affordable. <laughs> Better than an Apple Watch. Um, I love. I have this random obsession with like this one type of mouse for my computer, <laughs> and it is. Not like a super fancy one. It's like a pretty basic mouse, but I love it. It is the Logitech M510 <laughs> wireless mouse. It costs about 25 bucks. Whoa. And something about it. Number. I have I it. Like yeah. it. I don't know. It's just like <laughs> it, it has these little gr- it's like a very basic wireless mouse, but it just the size had these these little grooves in the side that I like just it I've gotten yeah, so used to it that I I have one at at home now and at yeah. work and an extra one floating around just in case like <laughs> one amazing. of the others go bad I'm so obsessed <laughs> and with it's, it it's not like an ergonomic one right no it's, it's like, like a, I mean it's yeah. like it no it's not like any special like your vertical or anything gotcha, or, yeah. no it's oh. I I just like I'm obsessed with it's like the most basic looking mouse if you look it up online, but I love it. That's funny. Yeah, I have an ergonomic mouse, which I'll yeah, I'll piggyback off of. I I don't I didn't look up the model number. Maybe I should have. <laughs> I think it's like Anker or Anker A N K E R and it's mm. like a oh, vertical yeah. mouse and it's supposed to keep like your wrists more aligned and I'm yeah, I'm like super used to that now and I like can't go back oh, to yeah. a normal mouse. So one way we differ and Ooh. when Ben comes to help me he's like oh what is this no. <laughs> like, actually yes yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. um, that's really funny uh, both your different answers actually this is related in terms of how you interact with your computer uh-huh. but and this is very bougie I think I know what's coming yeah <laughs> I, this is like gosh iPhone and the next thing is a Cintiq yeah. but that's my that's kind of my thing uh, that I I definitely um, can't live without um, but I, I love animating on the Cintiq. I use the the pen, uh, mm-hmm. and I find it just, just I don't know, animating um, with the pen feels really intuitive to me. I feel like I have more control, and I also like, I just like the way it feels, but I also like the way I can transition into doing drawing pretty quickly. Yeah. It's not mm. like, okay, I'm an- animating with my mouse, and I'm like, should I get out my like tablet and pen and then like do drawers and I'll probably be lazy and not do that. But if I'm sure already with the pen, mm-hmm. I'm kind of like, okay, like I can just like open up rough animator or whatever software and that makes and a lot of it. sense. So it just makes drawers a little less uh, of a barrier to, to for do. sure. Uh, yeah. And we just bougie. say too, like we, <laughs> it's we're, okay. <laughs> we're, we're really lucky. Like we're all currently at Disney and like this equipment's provided, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, we we can get Cintiqs and and special like ergonomic arms so that we can like oh, move the yeah. screen around and make it closer to us and adjust yeah, the sure. angle. And uh, I would say with the Cintiq, I mean it. Sure, that one's kind of bougie, but there's definitely a a less bougie version where I see a lot of animators at work who will have like a very small Wacom tablet mm-hmm. or or bamboo or some sort of tablet where they still like the ergonomics of the pen and, and it feels yeah. very intuitive, but, but it's not like the full fledged, uh, screen Cintiq if that's not quite in your budget right yeah. now. Let me ask with that. Do you ever have trouble with, um, shoot, like really fine tune amounts or something? I, mm. I feel like I've heard, I haven't really used it, but I've heard from some people that it's difficult if you're like grabbing a rotation axis and then you let go, it might pop another couple degrees or something. Oh, or, interesting. Do you not really notice that? I haven't really noticed that. You could probably see it in my animation. <laughs> Just like <laughs> random like rotation. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't too much. Um, okay, that's cool. I'm trying to think though, like 
if that's ever been an issue. I will I just, say whenever I go back to mouse, I like have like so little patience. I don't know oh, something yeah. about it just feels like more like in fact I feel almost like the opposite where when you when I have the pen cuz I use free rotate a lot. I don't necessarily oh, gotcha. animate on an axis one at a time. So because of that I feel like the pen is just more natural to mm -hmm. me, but that makes sense. Yeah, no I haven't yeah. noticed that, but maybe that, that is a cool. thing. Or maybe it's just like a sensitivity thing. I don't know. Maybe oh, maybe yeah. From. I'm curious. I I like to see people's like different screen setups and i like just changed Ooh, mine oh, which dang. i'm still like kind of feeling out and seeing if i like it where i have my cintiq like below a monitor and the mm -hmm. cintiq is like closer to me and i used to have the cintiq on the side of the monitor but i feel like i just wasn't using it because it was on the side so how do you have your setup That's garrett the way. <laughs> the way. yeah the cintiq <laughs> below and then the the monitor on top. Is yeah, that what yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, the only yeah. issue I have sometimes is like I put this into really low, or I try to, so I can uh -huh. like use the pen. And yeah. sometimes it covers the keyboard. Like I don't have a great. Oh, like, okay. Uh, yeah, but, I have been running into that a little bit where I feel like I don't have space to like keyboard or wrist rest or something. But, mm. but I love having like the the yeah uh, monitor on top be the kind of like this is what your animation looks like. You yeah, the camera view. Yeah, it's, it does feel yeah. more natural to have this into at the bottom because it's almost more like a notebook where you're like drawing it or drawing on a table or drawing on a yeah drawing table or something but oh, totally yeah, that yeah. About you. <sighs> i'm still a basic b i'm side by side oh <laughs> my God. basic ben, uh, basic ben. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah i man maybe i'll have to try the other way but yeah i've, I've been a side by side boy my my, <laughs> my whole career i'll have to try i've never tried the stacked method but i will say i feel like a lot of animators i admire not just the two i'm sitting between right now uh use the stacked method so maybe there's something to that do you ever get your neck because i remember when i was doing oh side -side, yes i would keep yes. looking at the screen on the left and my mm. neck would mess up but you know what good, good question yeah. i i feel like that is definitely a danger but what helps me mitigate that is another thing on the list here Ooh, perfect segue <laughs> a sit stand desk Oh, um, yeah. I do a decent amount of standing through the day. Ben's really good. At um, it. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I try in those instances to angle my whole body as opposed to just looking uh, okay. left and right. Yeah. And I try to do it consciously. I'm sure I still turn my head a lot, but so I haven't noticed a ton of, I will say in like the heat of like the pandemic, like right in the middle of 2020, I did start to feel a little neck strain here and there, okay. um, but since then it hasn't been an issue. And I think it's because I've been trying to be a little more cognizant about mm -hmm. actually turning mm -hmm. and looking at the monitors, but with the shoulders. But but yeah, I don't know. Does do you guys' necks never hurt from like looking down and up? No, uh, me. It's so new for me. I just oh, set yeah. it up like a couple weeks ago, so I'll, I'll have to report back. But hey, I listeners, did find, let us know. <laughs> 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 I did find strain from looking left to right because I. This is another bougie thing that I can't live without is my thirty-eight inch screen curve monitor. <laughs> oh, is that one of those like really wide? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. really big, and I would never pay for it on my own dime. But it's really nice that I get it at work, <laughs> and it's beautiful. And I can have like a million windows open. Wait, so you have your Cintiq on the bottom and then yes. the big wide yeah. top? Oh, I should, I should get that. You a, should get you should get that. Yeah. It's it's great. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Standing desk though, game changer. Yeah. You, you stand a lot, right? I feel like I, I see feel like I used to. Oh, you guys are so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Katie runs marathons, so oh, when yeah. she's well, not running, she should I be don't sitting. Know. I I have a sit stand desk, but I feel like I stand probably three days out of the entire year <laughs> for like 20 minutes and then i'm like i need to sit gotcha. down <laughs> no uh, see, find standing is my marathon so that's <laughs> <laughs> sorry go ahead Garrett. no i was gonna say i'm i'm similar where like i don't definitely don't stand enough but i find on days where i don't like go to the gym or something and i feel kind of like schlubby mm -hmm. those are the days i'm like okay i'm gonna stand today and it's like my workout for the gotcha. day is like standing mm -hmm. do you guys have anything these are things I wrote down. I don't use them, but I'm just curious if you guys use them. Like a a foot stand or like a standing mm. gel mat or anything like that that helps with st standing and working? You know what? I have a gel mat, but I've 
moved it out of the way <laughs> because it was annoying to move the chair back and forth whenever, uh, okay. whenever I wanted to switch. Yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. But I do notice if I'm doing like a lot shoes, of standing. With that, oh, that is something I had down, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I do recommend, if your workplace allows it, do not try to be fashionable. Get some really nice, like, cushy running shoes or walking yeah. shoes, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're standing for a decent amount of the day. Which I think doctors say you should just do a mix. It's not necessarily best to stand the whole day or sit the whole day. You just kind of vary it up every half hour to hour, give or take. Um, but yeah, I notice a huge difference in how I feel at the end of the day. It makes me feel like an old man saying this, but it's true. <laughs> I feel so much achier if I have like nice like fashion shoes on um, versus yeah, like I you know agree. Asics or whatever. Or, you know, <laughs> she running stuff. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, this, this might be like, this is sort of kind of related to like your workspace and stuff, but I don't know if it's necessarily like miscellaneous, but I'll, I'll just say, and you guys can tell me, mm -hmm. but <laughs> Velcro strips. Oh, and here's oh, why yeah. I'm going to cool. just pitch Velcro strips. Velcro <laughs> strips are amazing because if you're like me and you're kind of insane about cable management, yeah. with your home mm -hmm. setup, yeah. mm -hmm. it is the best way to like have good cable management because they're reusable. You can tie up a, uh, tie up the cables in like a nice organized way i have um this standing desk at home where i can like underneath there's like little crevices that i can just like attach kind of mm -hmm. run the cables to and use poker oh, strips cool. for and i feel like at home because there's like a, a work laptop and then there's my own personal yeah. thing the, the oh, cables yeah. are insane yeah so i'm yeah. kind of like uh, a little insane about um the the cable management so i recommend it just to keep your workflow organized i don't know if you guys that's great yeah that's yeah. i had not thought to say that but that yeah that's good great we like we have the poor man's version where we <laughs> use like the ties that go on like chip bags or like oh, or, yeah. or um like, like those ties? twisty ties on oh like oh, on like a bag. bread oh, bag like a bread yeah, or yeah, like yeah. a rubber band around the asparagus yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. Hey, works, maybe though. we should level up <laughs> <laughs> Actually, okay. speaking of but, like DIY versions of things, I meant to say this before with the sit stand desk, but I'll say another oh, tip yeah. with that is that, you know, there's like all these great companies like um, Uplift Desk that have mm. really cool desks where you can have them, you know, custom made for you. And you can go to any number of like Office Depot sort of places and get sit stand desks. Admittedly, they're usually pretty pricey, mm -hmm. right? Something you can do, it doesn't make it dirt cheap, but it definitely takes a big chunk out of the price, is you can just buy the sit-stand mechanism on its own, like the legs with the motor, mm -hmm. and then drill it into a top of your choosing. You can go to Ikea and get like a decent wood desktop for not an insane amount of money. And it might take your standing desk from like, uh, who knows, like $1,500 to like 400 or mm -hmm. 500 or something like that so again still not dirt cheap but more affordable for mm -hmm. sure if you if you're okay with a little bit of diy that's a really good tip because yeah uplift and, and those types of desks mm -hmm. are insane yeah for sure very expensive you guys have anything else for physical or are we done getting physical i <laughs> I have a few. Ooh, Katie's not done. Few cheap ones. Um, I mentioned wrist rests earlier. I really like oh. Ben doesn't oh. like them, but I really <laughs> like them. I have these like it's like a bean bag material where there's one that's long and goes along my keyboard and there's one that's smaller and goes next to my mouse and I really like it. Um, I do find it more supportive for my wrist while I'm typing or animating with the mouse and um, and I also just like it for like a little stress relief or thinking where I like pick it up and like kind of play with it and squeeze it while oh, I'm yeah. thinking. And I, I mean, it's, it's a weird use of it, but I, I love it. <laughs> so, That's cool. Yeah. And that, those are really inexpensive. You can definitely find them for cheap and it's just a tiny, tiny little thing, but, um, yeah. That's great. I like that. <laughs> you guys have anything else? Just a random one I thought off the top of my head is I have kind of a slightly larger mouse pad <laughs> than normal, <laughs> and I'm obsessed with it. I love yeah. just having a little extra real estate, but I hate not having a mouse pad. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, that's it. And it's pretty darn expensive. It was just a random generic one on Amazon for I don't know. Like, did I say expensive? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty darn inexpensive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a few bucks, but yeah. yeah. Here here's one I have is uh string lights. Uh, oh I'm very into like lighting. Um and just yeah, I feel like string lights make everything cozy. Maybe that's just like holdover from college years because I feel like it's a very college oh, yeah. thing. Oh string yeah. Lights everywhere, but I have like at my office at work, I have a uh, string lights and I have them in my room here. So, oh, that's awesome. I love it. There's that's definitely like... <laughs> something to like making your space feel homey and cozy and yeah. welcoming. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of my favorite like middle class fancy posts <laughs> where it's like <laughs> if a neighbor puts up string lights in their backyards and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, the Andersons must be doing pretty well for themselves. <laughs> like, it just it looks like so nice and the fun and classy. Color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I on a similar vein, I put like inspiring art and stuff like that, or just photos of family and and my cats and my friends, and just like, yeah, anything you can do to kind of make your space feel more welcoming and enjoyable to be in. Like, it doesn't have to be a sterile office cube um, if your workplace allows it, but yeah, yeah, just whatever you can do to make yourself more willing to be in the same place from nine (laughs) to six plus. So. Especially if you don't get a lot of um, like light from the window, like if yeah, you're in the center of like totally. an office space, oh, yeah. it's helpful. There's also those. Uh, I have like I think they're called like therapy lights or happy mm. happiness lights. It's like a oh stuff, a you know what or, or like a... you can get them from Amazon. It's just kind of oh, like okay. on a stand, and it's this this light that just like fills a soft kind of glowy light uh, into your yeah. space. Oh, cool! Um, totally. I use one of those too. But. Definitely. I have another bougie one. Oh, let's hear. It's a noise canceling headphones. I yeah, they're pretty vital for me at work, especially if you have roommates, which is silly because I have like the best roommate ever, Chris Hemanoff. Shout out! He's he's <laughs> he's very low impact and friendly, and like I don't really need to cancel his noise out, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know there's general noise in the department sometimes or people chatting or whatever and it is when you really need to focus i do find it extremely helpful um especially when i was a trainee and apprentice i shared a cube with like four other people um and there are moments where you know the supervisors will come by and give feedback to somebody and it's very easy to get distracted. So for me, yeah, it's a pretty crucial thing that I invested in. That's 100% great. 100% agree. Yeah. <laughs> Listener, put a pin in this. That's all I'll say for now. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's because we're doing. All right. No, 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 no. Uh, no okay. I'm not going to say I'm not going to spoil it. it. Listener, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but I'm going to roll with it. <laughs> Good. Yeah, on a like, related <laughs> vein, this is not me, but I was uh-huh. like Ooh. trying to think about this topic. It's what, okay if it's really you. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think about like what other people use oh, yeah. in the department, and you. I think there are a few animators that are like very dedicated to their headsets. With like oh, a microphone yeah. and <laughs> headphones, and when you see them pop on Zoom, you're like, "Oh wow!" Like, look at sound it. like a podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> podcast. Um, I think what else? Yeah, like you were mentioning lighting, and and lighting can be very good too for like zooming, um, if you have a remote or hybrid workflow, and um. I, I'm laughing now, or I'm starting to crack up because I'm thinking about like Zoom backgrounds and how oh. you like cater your Zoom background. <laughs> mm, yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of, well, now I'm going <laughs> to offend somebody. There's a lot of guitars in the backgrounds of our <laughs> animation department, which is cool, but also kind of funny that it's like so universal. But that's, so cool. um, anyway. that's amazing. That's all I got. <laughs> well, should we. Any more physical? Or are we ready to delve into the digital realm. domain? Realm. <laughs> <laughs> digital realm. Let's do it. Let's do it. Transition. Let's digitize. <laughs> and digitize. Yeah. <laughs> Digimon. <laughs> Digimon. Shut up. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So we've talked about this before, and I apologize if I've said this exact thing in like a tip jar or something, but... 
I'll say one of the things I love software wise, it's kind of an obvious one, but I'll speak more specifically about it is a tools <laughs> or anim tools for, for Maya. Um, and I'll say it's like an incredible suite of tools. We've, I, I'm pretty sure we've talked about it before, okay. but I will specifically call out the temp controls. Yeah. I absolutely love it's these controls where you can basically constrain anything to anything. So, uh, for example, if you have a weird, you know, rigs are usually set up with like, oh, you can have the arm in uh, body space or like absolute world space or shoulder space if it's IK. Well, let's say you like really wanted to see the arm in relation to the head. With temp controls, you could select the arm and then the head or maybe vice versa. I forget the order and say like put into parent space. And then you'll see not only when you move the head will the arm move to, but the graph editor for the arm will make sense in relation to the head. Mm -hmm. um, totally. So it's really awesome. I love it too for certain weird situations where I feel like we've all been there where it's like, it looks like the head is going down and the chest is going up here. And then you look at your graph editor and it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it is absolutely not doing that. But just because of some weird play with like the posing and the camera move or whatever inherited motion an inherited yeah. motion exactly it looks like that so you're like ah oh, you, you can either like chase it out or with this method you can really quickly be like okay i'll put head in chest mode mm -hmm. and now i can see it actually is going down in ty yeah um so i can just delete it or or have it go up a little bit or stay consistent and then bake it back. And it's just really nice, quick ways to make edits like that. And it's, it, for my money, it's top two or three, maybe yeah. top one, like most valuable thing you can have in, in Maya is being able to see anything in anything, any other objects place. Yeah. It's just like one tool within it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ben taught me about like putting something in camera space for like final polish where you're like really looking at things pixel by pixel and trying to track like the Z movement, like the depth from the camera. Yeah. Um, and it's such a great way to like really get polished nitty gritty. Yeah. Um, and I love it too. Yeah. For props where it's like, okay, someone's going to grab a prop and then you can really ease into it like having the hand grab something and you yeah. can see that graph way more cleanly like how the prop relates to the hand and vice versa and um yeah it's amazing it's it's so powerful yeah i feel like when you understand temp controls too it completely replaces like parent constraints so yes. yeah i remember when yeah. i was in school like how do you attach this like cup to this character's hand and you'd like yep. select them both do a parent constraint and then you'd have to like key the constraints weight on yep. or off uh, yeah. but if you're doing that like you really should look into like temp controls or yep. eb world space or whatever type of yeah. script that does this because it oh yeah eb world space i forgot that's oh, yeah that's yeah, yeah it's like i yeah. forgot that's, I don't know if that's like free or available. maybe you still pay for that yeah same same yeah. exact thing yeah. but like yeah, there's just a better way to deal with constraints in my. You should not be manually yeah. making a parent constraint for anim like animation. Um, yeah. yeah, it's. I think it's good to like know what's going on under the hood. Yeah. So like, go yeah. ahead and experiment with it. But when it's time to like actually animate a shot or do whatever, yeah, man, use one of the tools. <laughs> They're so much oh, better. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You said E tools, which is like a pared down version of Anim Bot, which is like a. It's oh, the yeah, more expensive, right. like subscription based tool suite, but yeah. so, so worth it. There's yeah. so many amazing things in there. The sliders, too. I was going to yes. shout out those, like for oh, smoothing yeah. keys in the graph editor or tweening or easing. Mm -hmm. um, those are great. Or arc tracking. They have, two, they're just like temp controls are just like one little thing. But yeah, that, like you guys said, it's just so worth the money to spend. Yeah. I'm surprised that. Like Autodesk hasn't absorbed it, in yeah, because it makes Gosh, it so phenomenal. To yeah, handle. yeah, yeah. Maybe it, maybe sure. that's a thing that might happen. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I've said this before too, but I remember that briefly when I freelanced in New York, there were some animators that would they would go from place to place with a little thumb drive, and their thumb drive had their version of like A tools uh, or Anim yeah. tools on it, and it's like. I mean, it makes total sense, but it's like going to a construction site with your own tool belt, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, it just makes your job so much easier if yeah, you know you have these, like, base things. you can customize, things, like, which 
um, tools are where and yeah. hide certain ones yeah. you don't use or whatever. But, yeah. 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 yeah a yeah, tools is free, right? And Anambot's the paid version. Uh, paid. I think is that's that true. I'm not sure. I think that's right, but I don't know if a tools is still oh, okay. in effect. I remember that was gotcha. like a thing you could get. I know it's, I think the focus that the creator mm-hmm. made was, uh, Anambot now, which is like licensed. You have to pay for it, but, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe a tools is still available. Gotcha. Yeah. Not sure. Yeah. That sounds great. It's a really good one. Because of any other digit digital oh, things, is that it for digital. Oh no, no I have something. I have if we, oh, okay, yeah. okay, good. <laughs> They're not as like robust, but a few things like it's great to have access to a screen recorder. Um, if you oh, have a, a MacBook, a it's, great. it's very useful for for me um, when I'm reporting like a bug or slowness or an issue to a, a TDE technical director. I love to screen record what I'm seeing just because mm-hmm. it, it gives so much more context because it's very, great. very difficult for people sometimes to reproduce what you're seeing. So um, I find that like absolutely crucial. And then I also actually use it for um, downloading reference from like oh. YouTube or something because there's a lot of <laughs> sketchy websites for downloading mm-hmm. YouTube clips and um, and sometimes they'll like put weird software like <laughs> malware on your computer <laughs> or pop-ups or whatever. So I'll, I'll use it for that or I'll like screen record a YouTube clip just to use as reference. Um, yeah. yeah, which, yeah, I think is great. That's really great. Yeah, that's a really good one. Good job, Katie. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got one that's man. This is like a it's like a black oh, hole. Man. Um, Ooh. if you know what it is, you know what I'm talking about. But it's called <laughs> Notion. <gasps> Have you guys heard of Notion? No. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. Do you know Evernote? Oh, uh, I think Evernote. I, I know like a of Evernote. Yeah, um, yeah. So Notion is it has kind of like an elephant for the logo. Oh, uh, Evernote? Evernote? Yeah, I think okay, okay. it's like a green icon. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, um, <laughs> Notion is, well, I just actually took a note of what it actually is. Notion is a freemium productivity and note-taking web application developed by Notion Labs, Inc. It offers organizational tools, including task management, project tracking, to-do lists, and bookmarking. Oh, my gosh. So it's essentially this okay. free software that you can get on any on your phone you can get it on your computer it also it's just like on the browser so any computer you you can do it at work Mm -hmm. i don't know how it's free honestly because i know evernote charged like a subscription completely free and you can um basically i use it for everything like i use it for trip like planning trips and like Mm -hmm. putting all my you know research into like different pages and like Mm -hmm. uh, recipes and stuff but for work or for just like my own personal projects i make I do like to-do lists on there. Um, I, oh, wow. Like just to like paint a picture of like how I might use it as like, okay, if I have this like test I want to work on, I make a page for it. I start doing brainstorming notes. I put like references in th- that page. And uh, if I get notes from, you know, people, I'll like put it in there. And it basically becomes like a centralized location where an organized centralized location where I have access to all the information related to that thing. So it's a little like hard to explain, but it's like completely taken over my life. <laughs> and it's really very, cool. Yeah. It's like productivity. Like YouTubers always talk about it. That's okay. why some people in their oh. audience might know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you used a word I've never heard before. Freemium, which I like. So that's free, but really great. So like it shouldn't be free. <laughs> I think when freemium like means it's free, but there is some things you can pay for to make. It uh, oh, like, okay, I think that's gotcha. what that technology is. Gotcha. I don't know what you pay for with Notion, though. I think maybe for companies, um, oh. they can pay for something for it. I also think like the cool thing about it is you can make it as simple as like a note taking thing or a journal, or people do things super complex with like databases and like mm-hmm. Kanban boards and all these like insane like uh, things. So. Anyways, just cool. look into it because it's free and it's good if to have to organize your your digital life. Is that N O T I O N? Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. Okay. Yeah, yeah, check I it out. Heard of it. I haven't heard of it's it. It's just like kind of a hard thing to explain. That's why I was like, I don't know how to talk sure. about it, but you can do it a lot on it. So just check it out. That's really cool. Wow. Thanks, Garrett. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anything else? I have a quick little one. So this could be. 
this could be a number of different things, but I'll say I have the Adobe Creative Cloud, mm -hmm. like Creative Suite membership mm -hmm. thing. And um, so I do use multiple um, things, whether it's like Adobe Animate or, or Photoshop, Illustrator, blah, blah, blah. But I specifically love Premiere Pro, uh, specifically for mm -hmm. editing my my video reference. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are a couple alternatives out there, like Kden Li Live, uh, maybe some other things where that are free. Um, but yeah, I just I think the suite. I think if you, I'll say a pro tip. I wanted to fold in with this. If you pay for the yearly membership as opposed to monthly and talk to their customer support, <laughs> they'll, they will usually knock a decent amount off the price for you. Uh, uh, so yeah. check it out. Maybe even if you're a student, maybe you can get even a little more of a discount uh, um, if you're okay with like a yearly thing. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, you just contact customer support. But it is pretty awesome. I specifically, like I said, use Premiere Pro all the time for video reference because I love, I can just really quickly chop up. And then I have like, okay, these are my top three takes. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you can kind of narrow it down from there it's one of those things that like sometimes there are free versions for for things but the paid version is so much more convenient like i'm thinking about um, gimp versus photoshop oh yeah i'm a gimp <laughs> user right. and i hate it oh yeah because <laughs> i just i'm too stubborn to pay for photoshop but it's just like yeah adobe it's so intuitive like they're uh -huh. i've used premiere before too and it's just like so nice it's so yeah. worth it yeah totally this is not related but wow. just I think, I guess this counts as digital. I was just going to say podcasts in general for oh, good. my work. <laughs> yeah. so I thought it'd be fun to talk about, like, it doesn't have to be a podcast, but what do you guys like listen to while you work or watch or whatever? And I definitely have some podcasts that I frequently listen to that I find like nice for working. Like I love Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Oh, that's great. It's often yeah. very like industry focused because basically Conan like interviews various celebrities about like their current projects and um so it's like somewhat related enough that i find it like interesting while animating and, and comedy feels like related to or a lot of the times they talk about comedy and how hard it is and the rejection you feel and like what <laughs> and trying to make it uh, it feels like so yeah. relatable so i listen to that one a lot and then um I have a lot of, these are not related to animation. I listen to Radio Lab. I listen to This American Life. I listen to like more self helpy ones like Money Podcast, <laughs> like So Money. And um, Nerd Wallet has a smart money podcast. And um, yeah, I'm just curious like, what do you guys listen to while you work? Like, what helps get you in the zone? Or That's great. Rainy that's Sounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great one. Yeah. No. No, Wait, do you, do you, have the premium version? No. Oh. <laughs> no, I I tend to like animate like a I don't I I tend to kind of like go in silence cuz I get distracted. Um except when I'm polishing, I do like listen to YouTube. Uh sometimes like there's some podcasts on there just like entertainment, like the H3 podcast shout out. <laughs> um, nice. But I'd be curious to hear you, Ben. Clint's reptile. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I love, uh, I listen to a bunch of different things. A lot of the same uh, podcasts as Katie. I love, I'll give a shout out to my favorite is probably stuff you should know with oh, yeah. uh, Chuck Bryant and Josh Clark. Absolutely love that one. Um, but yeah, I'll say clips, Clint's Reptiles is this YouTube page. I've gotten obsessed with over the, like, <laughs> it's like 2020 probably. And uh, it is what it sounds like. It is this guy who generally talks about yes, different reptiles. Yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> and he's, uh, he's like a PhD guy in Utah and is super passionate about animals. Specifically he's very reptiles. endearing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, and I just, yeah, I'm actually someone who I generally, unless I'm animating dialogue, I generally like having some kind of for lack of a better way to refer to it, meteor thing going on in the background where it's like either a a video or a podcast or something. And sometimes I'll still get in moods where I want like just tones or rainy, rainy day, I think it's called, or or rainy yeah, mood rainy rather. Rainy sounds. Or, or yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I usually like having, 
I usually, my YouTube autoplay is just going like crazy. So it's usually a mixture of Clint's Reptiles and Inside the NBA with Charles Barkley. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ben loves Inside the NBA. I like it too. It's very yeah, funny, actually. Yeah, I have so many. I also like rethinking with Adam Grant. That was a psychologist I mentioned um, last oh, episode yeah, for Bernard. And mm. I like um, Food We Need to Talk, which is like a, a nutrition and health podcast that I really like. And I have so many. The Happiness Lab, that's another mental health one, which I love. Um, this isn't just for ladies, but I think it's especially great for ladies. I loved um, Wiser Than Me, which has uh, – it's Julia Louis-Dreyfus from Seinfeld of fame who's mm-hmm. – and Veep. And she's interviewing older women and asking for their advice. And I loved it because I just feel like older women are not – never really have a voice in our culture. And, and it was really cool to see her – interview mm-hmm. people like Toni Morrison and um oh no I'm Jane blanking. Fonda Jane Fonda yeah and now I'm like did she interview Sally Toni Morrison I might have made that up because I feel like Toni Morrison passed away recently <laughs> oh, anyway no. now I feel really bad <laughs> oh, okay. but it's people like that though where you're yeah. just like wow I would really love to know um what these women think about life and what advice they have to give and totally. yeah and then in addition to podcasts, like I definitely have certain music that I gravitate to. Um, I think we've talked about this before, but just things, depending on where I am in my shot, I have music that's like, if I really have like really tough problem solving and I need to do a ton of shot surgery, I definitely mentioned this. I'll listen to like the Sim City soundtrack <laughs> and I listen to um, the Imagineering Story soundtrack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There, there's actually a very good rationale behind this, and I agree with you. Yeah, there's well, yeah. like this like puzzle um, solving aspect. Yeah, it, it the music yeah. somehow feels like motivational yet like I don't know like it's like you're playing it, a game. Yeah, yeah, it encourages you to like think about things. In yeah, a weird way. But it's not distracting. I Yeah, I really love it for that. And then other times when I'm more in the zone, I might listen to musicals that I'm familiar with. Or Waitress, I can, like, shout out. Yeah, I love Waitress. <laughs> 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 or I can kind of follow along the story and I'm very familiar, but it's not distracting because I'm so familiar. Um, and then this is a funny one. Oh, dang. I'll listen to like... <laughs> really dirty rap sometimes because <laughs> I just like find it amusing it makes yeah. me like not take my job too seriously because I'm like oh I'm animating cartoons but I'm listening <laughs> to this like really dirty rap I, I just kind of like at the end of the day we're just humans <laughs> we all just have desire oh my <laughs> so god like... <laughs> now I'm like gonna get in trouble <laughs> but no, it's in the privacy of my noise canceling headphones um, and it's... every time I see you at work like working away. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna imagine you That's listening to this thing. like hardcore. It's just like it kind of cracks me up. I'll listen to it while yeah. I'm running too because it great. just like yeah. lightens my mood, and I'm always like amused by it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. We Ben and I like just rediscovered oh. the Usher song. I want to make love in this club. Anyway, I Which just, granted that's not like it's not even that yeah. bad. But anyway, I there's something <laughs> about like being amused or like bringing humor into yeah. your everyday. Not that I think they wanted to be humorous, but for uh, me. It- <laughs> sometimes you need that Nicki Minaj super freak. Yeah, moment. exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's on my list. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, anyway. <laughs> Those are all really good. That's great. <laughs> Amazing. Um, one, uh, digital thing that I, I thought of too. I feel like I mentioned this before was, um, Rough animator. I keep. I feel like I bring oh, this yeah. up every day. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Made by an NYU alum. Shout out oh. Jacob Kafka. Uh, but yeah, it's one. It's one time fee for seven dollars. There's no subscription, which is already amazing, and it's regularly updated. Um, it's super great. It's super easy to use. Uh, you can use it for thumbnailing. You can use it for drawovers. You can export out image sequences, um, MP4s. You can. It's just like awesome. Mm-hmm. really great do you guys yeah. use it or I, I guess we have stuff at disney that's kind of like doesn't mean you would need it because there's yeah 
Sure. So I, I have used it. Yeah. And I, I bought it because it was, I definitely felt like it was worth it. <laughs> it's so funny. We talk about this all the time with like your frame of reference for, or just like the mentality behind paying for an app versus whatever. Like you don't blink at like paying five to $10 for a coffee, you know, yeah. every day or every other day or whenever. Uh, yeah. But then all of a sudden, if an app is $7, you're like, whoa, like it, this better be great. <laughs> but like, yeah, I can say with absolute yeah, confidence, that goes in. Rough Animator is worth so much more than yeah. $7. Uh, it is a steal for seven bucks. It's it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't use it in my everyday, but I, I use like the work equivalent sometimes mm -hmm. for shots where yeah, you just roughly try to plan something um, with a Cintiq or with an iPad or yeah, that's great. Okay, so next we are going to go into the miscellaneous or MISC Ooh. for those who are short on time. <laughs> um, so this one was kind of a catch-all for things we weren't sure where to, you know where to put them. So if anybody has, a, you know what, I'm just going to start it off. I feel like I'm I'm already <laughs> talking one out. Okay, do it. This is a silly thing, but I'll say. I love my no spill coffee mug uh. <laughs> <laughs> or coffee thermos rather. Yeah. And I will tell you, it sounds ridiculous, but there, I remember, so Katie and I went to school at SCAD and about halfway through our time there, there was a rule where all of a sudden they were like, no food or drink <laughs> in the in the laboratory, which was like terrible because people like lived in the laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> you need like food or drink there, food and drink there. <laughs> um, but it was because a shocking amount of people, maybe myself included, I don't know, I won't say, have sp had spilt things <laughs> like whatever on their computers, and they're like you know ten, fifteen thousand dollar computers and keyboards and stuff. So I'll just say, if you're in the industry for any amount of time, this sounds ridiculous, but you probably will spill something. <laughs> so because of that, I highly recommend my, uh, it's one of those coffee thermoses that has like a button you have to push to be able to uh, drink out of it, you know? Okay. And I have knocked it over at my computer so many times, <laughs> I can't even tell you. And every time I'm like... Thank God, this yes. is the no spill thing. It's a silly one, but I love it. It's probably like actually, I wrote down the insulated coffee mug, and I assume Ooh. it also like keeps your beverages warm or cold does. or whatever. And that is pretty. That's a really nice feature to have, where you get your coffee in the morning, and then it's still warm two hours later, and you don't have to go back to the coffee station. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Or if you bring it from home, then it lasts yeah, you for a while. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The the uh, thermos technology has really <laughs> taken off. Kudos to yeah. that entire industry. <laughs> Whoever is researching the thermos technology, if you could get on global warming, I think it could yeah, really help us out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that kind of brings up to just like coffee in general. Or like oh, tea. yeah, I think that stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm. I love both coffee and tea. It's so great. <laughs> Do you have any recs on either end for oh, like specific uh, anything? Whether it's a brand or like a specific Ooh, like yeah. when you go to X place, you always order this or whatever. I'd be curious to hear. Okay, this is like let me hear bougie. <laughs> Good. Well, no, just having like I, we have an espresso machine. <laughs> they say here. drink for the job you want. So that's what they say. <laughs> you have an espresso machine espresso. here. <laughs> Sorry. Espresso. Espresso. We that was one of the things we bought when we uh kind of as like a homecoming get or is that yeah. a homecoming first thing we bought when we, we got the house is like yeah. oh housewarming. Any, housewarming. Okay, yeah. I mean. And we got a little like Breville espresso machine. And, uh, I typically have Americanas. Oh which is just like espresso. Because you coffee. are an Americano. <laughs> I am an American. <laughs> Actually, that's Ben's go-to as well. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Lattes. We used to do lattes like every day, oh, yeah. and that's a lot of like cream. Uh, all that lactose, <laughs> man. A lot of lactose. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. No. I just yeah. Don't. That's related to like snacking in general. I oh. will admit to snacking. I love having certain snacks to go yeah. during the day, whether it's like... 
I, I haven't been on this as much recently, but I used to have like peanut butter pretzels a lot because they're like a oh, self contained. Yeah, so oh, are you going to shout out the best we've had? Oh, Trader Joe's. Trader yeah, Joe's. Yeah. There's something about them. <laughs> it's pretzel with a little peanut butter in the middle. Is those yeah. like little pretzel nugs? Yeah, yes. Exactly. Oh, I've had those. Nuggets. Somehow Trader Joe's. I mean, you can't have like a bad one. They're all good. <laughs> they last a long but time. But somehow and, yeah. Trader Joe's does it better than anyone. Yeah, they're kind of, they're a, longer the and thinner. Better. Does it so <laughs> good? get dry eating a lot of them? Or is <laughs> it? Maybe I drink water. Not if I have an Americano. If I, <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. Actually, I don't know. Do, do you find that? No, well, no, I, I don't snack on that. I guess I should. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I do don't like, have like various protein bars or granola bars nearby yeah. and um, actually, I don't snack on these as much. I used it as like a a bribe mechanism. I have like peanut butter, peanut M and M's at oh. my desk just to like mm. make people like me and have them come. To <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah. And people do like you, and I think yeah. it's because of the M M&M. and M. And it cracks me up because I like. <laughs> so I work hybrid. So right now I work Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I'll like come yeah. in and realize that the level has gone down since I've been on. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's any We don't think it's rats. That like don't leave a residue on your fingers because yeah. like, you're like on your computer. It's like Cheez-Its. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, Wait, not you... like cheese curls, but... Can you give your pro tip about cheese curls then? How do you... Oh, use chapsticks. Yeah. hey oh, That should have been a tip jar. could cheese not agree Cheetos. more with this. You don't get the cheesy residue on your fingers. And I person. know what you're thinking, listener. <laughs> Easy for you to say, Katie. You're half Chinese. <laughs> Let me tell you, as a full-blooded German-American, d- figure out the chopsticks it's because great. it yeah. is so much it's better. So eating a, When I'm at home, I use chopsticks <laughs> even, and I don't even have to. It's so much better. Yeah. Wait, sidebar about like yeah. snacking and candy. <laughs> I can't have candy in a in a close vicinity to me because I f- yeah. feel like I can't stop eating it. Ooh. Are you guys the type that can like have like half of a Snickers bar and be okay, or do you need to like like uh what, what Ben's pointing at me? <laughs> Maybe I didn't finish. <laughs> Let me ask you this. When you say candy, do you mean any candy? Or do you mean like Snickers? Do you mean like chocolatey? Caramel, any, any caramel. Sort of Do you like, mean what if it's like uh, Sour Patch Kids? Same. I'll I'll pretty much get through it. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Are you not that way? Because I think we're split. Actually. Yeah, I'm not that way. Okay. But then maybe. Wait, you're not that way. What? I don't. I can stop eating candy. Yeah, you like chocolate though. No, I love chocolate, but but, can, but, but like you the feel M&Ms like you are stop? in my office. Oh yeah, that's true. That that's true. Yeah. I'll say I have a w- weird thing where specifically with like soury, sugary candy. You can stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. That one gets me. Oh, yeah. Like uh like sour straws or, oh, or yeah. whatever, like the sour airhead yeah. things or whatever. I'm really into yeah. that. Um, chocolate, I'm pretty decent at mm. mediating myself. But yeah. uh, I definitely yeah. prefer chocolate, and I like Ben knows I love the salty sweet combo. So I like yeah. love chocolate covered pretzels. I love combining chocolate with popcorn, yeah. or whatever. But I think I'm pretty good at moderation. You are, yeah, it's yeah. good. You're very disciplined. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You don't want to crash, but yeah, but I do find like having like a trail mix or something nearby is really crucial for getting through crunch or getting through like a, like the, like we go to lunch at noon to one and then there's like five to six hours after that. Where I, you're lunchtime like doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you like really need something at like three or four. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. I'll say this is related to, I should have folded it it in earlier <laughs> but garrett asked the question doesn't your mouth get dry like with uh, those peanut butter pretzels <laughs> one of the other things i had written down here another drink thing and it's kind of silly but i will plug the 32 ounce nalgene <laughs> narrow mouthed water <laughs> bottle narrow mouth that might seem not like a big deal. I go for the, the narrow mouth. It's in the checkout mouth. line at REI. It is in the checkout line at REI. You can also get it <laughs> online. 
Uh, they also have them in 16 ounce, but you need a lot of water. Get Go ahead and go for the 32. Yeah. Um, Are but, you a hydro homie, Ben? I, I am a hydro homie. I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> explain the narrow mouth. I'm yeah, curious. good question. So you would think like wide mouth, no problem, right? <laughs> but I'll tell you this. When you're at work, you're slurping that down or whatever, or God forbid, if ben you're ever like timing drinking. For if it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God forbid, if you're ever like walking and want to take a drink. Oh yep. You drink the car. F- from the wide mouth or in a car. That's a great oh. example. You bring. I'm so yeah. glad you brought it. That's a, that's potentially <laughs> it the like best example. All over your face. It go. The, so the wide mouth. It goes up to like halfway up the bridge of your oh. nose, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, if there's. <laughs> Any sort of any residual movement going on, yes. it splashes all over you. Okay. The, the narrow point. mouth, the top of that opening is on the top of your lip. Mm-hmm. You can press it against there. Mm-hmm. So safe. No spillage. So you're not plugging the Stanley oh. mug things. Stanley? <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> are not up to date with all the TikTok and stuff. Oh, no, I'm not. You know those pink Stanley, Stanley, like the name, oh. the full name Stanley. What was it, Narrow Mouth? It's, it's like this <laughs> mug that has a straw in it. And oh. they're like different colors. Oh. People are like going nuts for them and okay. like storming Target. Well, I'll say maybe Which, for that. I haven't tried it. We don't have straw, it. Straw, like is that hard to that, clean? Good point. Good point. <laughs> I don't know about the cleaning the straw. You got to get one of those little brushes. Yeah, yeah you can get those brushes, uh, I guess. Yeah. I, I first I was kind of laughing about the narrow mouth thing, but I, yeah. now I, I've had that experience. Yeah. Of, you know, the water, and it just like goes over your I, I you so can, want I you to try say, a narrow mouth. You can also mouth. get a splash guard that you can insert into one of the wide mouth ones. Yeah, but a fun. Yeah, no, it is pretty good. It's like this little rubber insert. That's a good tip for your mist. Like say, a, this is in another, this this is is another, another tip official. official tip for mist. <laughs> yeah. It's like this little rubber piece that fits into the, the wide mouth. Hole. <laughs> and it, it's like it makes it like a kid's sippy cup almost uh, but it does stop it from splashing on you so if you already have a wide mouth you don't have to go and buy a new narrow mouth but if you want to <laughs> go for the narrow mouth garrett i so want you to try a narrow mouth i love this and i'll say i have the 32 ounce nalgene narrow mouth in kind of an olive green uh, oh. i get so many comments is on it, it is that at work mouth? I'm pointing to my water bottle. Uh, yeah, that narrow. that is like yeah. the size of narrow mouth. Okay. Yes, <laughs> yes. Garrett is pointing to kind of a mental or a metal canteen that looks kind of narrow looks mouth. Like yes, two inches across maybe. Okay. Yeah, it is so great. But everybody, if you get the olive green, so many people are like, "Oh, that looks like olive oil. That looks are like we- whiskey." And then you can start a nice little conversation <laughs> about. <laughs> <laughs> but and we honestly great. don't drink enough water as people yes. as humans so it's a good it's a good reminder let's yeah. plug that water and go to the bathroom more so you get you more steps in, in. Yep. yeah <laughs> katie is there another nutrient you'd like to plug we've talked about this recently nutrient? starts with a p protein yeah oh <laughs> Yeah, I actually this is why good for I, it was not on my list. But I know, no, no, no. <laughs> I, no, I think you should talk about it. Protein Me? powder. Yeah. Well, yeah, protein's great as a woman because it's seen as like a very. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it's what? it's seen as like okay, okay. So Garrett said protein powder. So listener, when you think of protein bar, protein powder. What are you thinking of? Bodybuilder. Probably a douchey guy yeah. with a really thin, oh like, muscle God. shirt on. But Katie Lowe, I can tell you, yeah, takes exactly. a lot of protein powder and protein I bars. Try to, yeah. Yep. I, the, now we're getting into nutrition in general. Yeah. But I, I feel like misc. recent, not recently, but it was, it took till my 20s to realize that I was like drastically under eating protein in yeah. general. Mm-hmm. And there's sort of like a, I don't know the official stats. I'm not like prepared, but uh-huh. but kind of depending on your weight, you're supposed to eat like a certain number of grams for protein of protein, and and especially if you're like an active athletic person or you're working out, like you need to like double or triple that. Yeah, so I found out like I probably need to be eating like a hundred grams plus of protein a day, hmm. but, like minimum. Yeah, yeah and like. Yeah. Or maybe even more like 150 to 200, yeah. but I, 
That's a lot. It's a yes. lot. Yeah. Okay. A lot of this. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to defend this. I know I kind of like <laughs> drug us here, but <laughs> this is related to work. It's about your general health and what you bring to the yeah. office, the rest mm-hmm. of your life. I think the average American is getting like average anybody is probably getting between 30 to 70 grams of protein a day. I would agree with that. And I would say the average American does not weigh 30 to 70 pounds. <laughs> I would yeah. say yeah. you should be getting at least as many grams of protein as pounds yeah. you weigh. I think- Maybe slash potentially like, more like if you 1.5 grams per pound yeah yeah i think so so think like, about that i mean that's eating yeah you should be getting a you need to be make if you're not making a conscious effort to get enough protein you're probably not getting enough protein yeah, i mean and caveat that like if you're like a serious meat eater you probably or you might be getting maybe more. yeah um i have a tough time because i'm vegetarian so i like have to be very conscious about like working it in with protein sure. powders and um, like eating certain protein combos like beans and rice. But yeah, it is a constant thing yeah. where like I'm not I'm not like super huge on calorie counting or anything, but I have gone through periods where I like count my protein just to like really try to track because yeah. you can really easily go through a day without like eating any protein. So totally. I'm yeah. totally I'm glad I'm Glad we're here <laughs> because I think it's a very it's legitimate. Very passionate. No, we've talked about yeah. a lot of bougie things. This is one that people can generally do. Focus on your eating, yeah. uh, whether protein yeah. powder or whatever your meals. It for me, I notice a huge difference That's at work true. Yeah. when I've been getting a decent amount of the nutrients I need yeah. plus water Actually, versus I will not. Say- the three of us, I think, are pretty good at oh. like, meal stuff at work. Like, oh, we're dang. pretty organized. And, yeah. Um, well, you guys more than me. You guys actually like do. No, no, no you do it too, guy. <laughs> are you gonna? Are you gonna shout I, out? I that was thing? just thinking yeah. that could be a miss for you. So I use uh, this service, man. I really, we really should be sponsored by them. I know. No. Uh, <laughs> Service called, it's kind of a chicken and egg thing. Do we advertise it first, <laughs> then get sponsored, or vice versa? I don't know. I know. <laughs> no, I use a service called Thistle, and it's uh, vegan like lunches that you can, or I think there's breakfast, lunches, and dinners. But um, it is kind of bougie because you know you're paying like I forget like fourteen to sixteen bucks a meal, but um, they like ship you out like uh, meals. And the reason I did it was because like my cholesterol was high, and it was. Because, um, you know, I was, I don't know, eating too much meat or whatever, saturated fats. And I, I've been doing it for like the past six months and I got my cholesterol checked and it went way down. And That's my doctor's amazing. like, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Um, so I'm not, I'm not like vegetarian or, or vegan or anything, but I figure like, okay, well, I can do at least some like meals I have aren't yeah. meat. And so, yeah, yeah it's That's been, great. I've been really liking it. Honestly, it's, it's great. And if you obviously... It depends on like if you have enough money to if like if you have a job to pay for that and you want to spend your money on that. But um, yeah, I've been liking it. But yeah. you guys actually like meal prep, so I feel like you're better examples. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's. A, but it's similar, um, I guess, mentality where it's just like okay, like these are things I making like yes healthy decisions yeah like, like the, structurally building it in yeah. yeah I feel like the greatest obstacle between you and being healthier is just preparation because yeah. like in the moment when we're starving or we've been working all day we just want something that's when we're like you know go for the fast food whatever and we still love fast food don't give us wrong <laughs> we still get it a lot. But, but it's um, maybe not the best thing to like fuel you for. Yeah, yeah. To but we try to make our main hours thing. Of work. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You feel better when you eat. Eat better. Yeah, totally. Like your energy totally. level, your, your digestion. Which always, <laughs> I I love what you've said before. Or is it you, somebody you listen to with like if you're trying to be healthier, don't focus on cutting yeah. bad things out. Yeah, focus on getting good things yeah into your totally. system and then it'll kind of naturally by the time you like get everything good and you're full or you mm, yeah don't feel like the same cravings totally yeah. like that protein goal and i think yeah. your katie has a personal goal of eating like vegetables with every meal yeah if you're getting that amount of protein and vegetables you will not find yourself craving the yeah, junk food much. as much for yeah. sure 
Yeah. Yeah. Because I think there's something about restriction, which like is psychologically like so draining. Yeah. And then, um, you're bound to like break it and feel really guilty or like mm. then you go on a binge or something. And Yeah. Um, I, I just find it like a much healthier goal to like, okay, I'm going to focus on eating this thing that I know is good for me. Um, maybe I'll still have room for the unhealthy thing later, but like I need to hit certain targets. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, we're, we're really getting into nutrition. Oh. You should listen to my favorite podcast, Food We Need to Talk. Oh, there you um, go. It about all nutrition. But <laughs> it's important. It's good stuff. Anything else for Miss? Or go ahead, Garrett. No, I was just gonna gonna say anything else for Miss. I was gonna Ooh. say the same thing as you. <laughs> okay, um, hello. Does, are we ready to move on? Sure. I think that brings us to our fun section, which is oh duds or like things we <laughs> we bought but <laughs> kind of regret, and we like thought it was going to be a game changer for our workflow, and then like it just did not. Hold or, or or really make a <laughs> difference. Things, we thought, yeah. <laughs> I will say I love the name Duds. Also, every time I hear the word Duds, <laughs> I think of like things you wear, like oh really? nice Duds. I thought you were gonna say milk Duds because we were talking about candy. Uh, no, I, I think of like things we wear. I've is never it, heard that. Is that right? Is that <laughs> duds like oh that's like a duddy. Oh, check out my Duds. No, it's what? more like oh what I got. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Is this a Midwest thing. Maybe. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. keep going. What are okay. you referring to? <laughs> Could it, it be up. any article of clothing? I mean, that's the part I'm not 100 percent sure about, which I'm insecure <laughs> about now. I don't know if it it My might. Case. Here's two things. It know. might specifically <laughs> be shoes. Okay. That's yeah, but if it's not shoes, it it might just be like anything well, you've got on. Like, and it's like oh, check out my duds. I feel like that's duds. what I mean. It's when you say it like that, it sounds yeah. like a thing. Thank you. I believe you. Yeah. yeah. The topic it's like regret. Like okay. Well, I didn't know I was the only one out of the three of us that thought that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> totally yeah. Fine. yeah. Regrets. I can start. Go. I because I I suggested this topic because I have some. <laughs> oh. The first one is husband. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I did not expect that <laughs> a little marital humor. <laughs> so but, um, marital humor. Not at all. It, the first <laughs> one is a posture vest. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good one. Our Your friend, mama. Sagar Arun. Oh, he, oh, my God. One day. I can't believe it. Was wearing and like plugging this like cool looking posture vest thing he bought, which like helped him keep a straight <laughs> posture at his desk. And it looks like something like, I don't know, it looks like. A Mission Impossible or like Ninja yeah. Turtle thing. It like thing. pushes your <laughs> shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like the backpack without a backpack. It's mm. like just the straps. But yeah. and you like tighten them. And I wore it for like one day for like 15 minutes. And I was like, this thing <laughs> is like digging into my skin and I hate it. <laughs> um, and I bought Ben one too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was pretty inexpensive, but yeah, I that's definitely like sitting in a drawer somewhere or maybe like in a donation bag. I don't even know where it is, but it did not <laughs> make an impact. <laughs> that's a that's a good one. There's so many things on that, like on Instagram where you'll like, yes. see an ad for something. Yeah, like that, yeah. And you're just like, it does this. Like, oh, I'm going to be of- so productive once I get this or like so healthy. Yeah. yeah. Actually... <laughs> Related. I should have put this in the miscellaneous category. Uh-huh. Uh huh. No, that's great. You two will not know this or relate. <laughs> okay. Oh, and yeah. I'm just, try me. I'm just gonna be really like honest and personal. It's crucial to have a good bra at work. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> like you just don't want to have any back pain or anything like digging into you. And they're literally. Is, I'm glad you're bringing this up. This is very legitimate. <laughs> There's been multiple times, full disclosure, where yes. Katie's been in a really bad mood. Yes. And then she's like, I, I have the next. wrong. Okay, keep going. Sorry. Is <laughs> occasionally I'll buy like a bra that's too small or something. And <laughs> I will notice like, oh, like my breathing is slightly restricted. Oh, and yeah. It's correlated the mind body connection we were talking about last episode. <laughs> I think it makes me like, more stressed out and in a bad mood when I can't breathe fully. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I'm adding the 
um, female perspective or a person with breasts. Um, breasts perspective. You don't have to be a person who wants some extra chest but, support yeah. perspective. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, I guess the the bottom line is like wear comfortable things that like help you. Like it could also be like I remember when I started out in the industry, I wanted to dress really nice, and I would wear like a pencil skirt to work or something yeah. or tights, and then I. Like now, I wear like a lot of athleisure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I just know like it's it's so important to be comfortable. But yeah, um, sidebar: Does it kind of annoy you guys that we're living in Los Angeles and it's hot, and oh. we go go to work, and I'm always wearing pants. Like I want to wear shorts, <laughs> oh. but it's like so cold. The AC and these. You know what? I wasn't going to bring this up. <laughs> But I'll bring it up now. And I was going to say, it was actually part of MISC as well. Snuggies? <laughs> yeah. Snuggies. Yes. How did you know? No, it was layers. Um, oh. Um, yeah. It's like a silly, because it sounds so silly. But like, I will say, yeah, especially living and working in LA, yeah, to Garrett's point, and Garrett has beautiful legs, but he feels like he can't wear shorts to work. And it's because, yeah, I want you to showcase it's the, my beautiful legs. <laughs> Just kidding. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's a silly thing, but I would say if you can plan your outfits with layers yeah. accordingly, yeah. um, there's you remember so, those again, like, it's silly, but like it does make a difference. Like yeah. when I'm comfortable, I do feel better at my job. There are frankly. like room. The rooms at work vary in temperature wildly. Yes. Depending yeah. on like whether your room has the thermostat or the vent or whatever, or there's yeah. the number of people in the room, whatever. Totally. Yeah. So you really, yeah, have to be prepared. <laughs> so people have bought like low voltage space heaters. Oh, in there, yeah. Which oh, they have yeah. to be low voltage because otherwise they're like a fire hazard. <laughs> right. But yeah. um, I haven't done that, but that. Yeah, it yeah, might be necessary. Yeah, span, yeah. If you run hot, like whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with you, though. Where it's like, okay, wait, Garrett and I both generally bike into work, and it's like those are two very different scenarios. <laughs> of, like <laughs> pumping on a bike outside versus Super sitting at your desk and yeah, yeah stuff. Totally. And I, I imagine it's probably hard for the studio to account for all the like equipment that needs to be. Yeah, well, totally. Totally. there's a lot yeah. of different types of people, so. But it is like I'm like I do think we over air condition in general. I think that there's yeah. been like articles written about that, and I don't know. There's probably reasons that I I'm too dumb to know, but yeah, yeah. there probably are reasons. I don't think you're too dumb to know, <laughs> so I won't say <laughs> yes to that. <laughs> Back to duds. 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 Yeah, regrets. Right. Oh, you ready? I've got one. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is it your throwback? How'd you know? Yeah. Oh, this is the thing I was like shocked. Okay, okay. Noise canceling headphones. <laughs> is your dud? Oh, I, this is a oh. gift I bought for. No, no, no. <laughs> so there's a big, there's a big asterisk here. I do like them, but at work, I actually prefer the really basic Apple corded headphones oh. that have the oh. microphone in them. Because we talked about headphones before, or like headsets before, I, in particular, really like being able to hear what's going on around me. If anybody ever needs me, or there's a conversation where like I might ben pick is a something. Supervisor now, by the way. A lot no, of no, no, no. We it's didn't acknowledge that. that. It's not because of that. <laughs> Congrats, but, uh, That's true. <laughs> it's not because of that. But you pick up on things that like you might. Otherwise, not here, <laughs> which I'm trying to word that in a way that doesn't sound like I'm just like, you know, like <laughs> Snoop. But, um, no, I, yeah. but I, I love those things that the more basic Apple headphones. But do headphones you not get distracted one. when you're, if you're working and there's it, like people in your office? It's yeah. definitely a potential drawback. Yeah. But I generally, I, I like just being like, okay, I'm not going to pay attention to that, even though I can hear it. And like, I can always, it, double-edged sword because like I could be like oh I'll just turn up my volume a little bit which could be bad for your ears oh, you know sorry. but um I like it and I think the microphone inside works like incredibly well compared to like a lot of headsets and stuff um so I really like those actually That's and I still like my noise canceling headphones but I yeah for airplanes and stuff but I generally do not use them at work mm. and 
Listener, please know this is happening in real time. We're not making it up. See the little note I wrote in my notes under noise canceling uh, headphones thing. Katie and Garrett will not agree. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett, Katie and Garrett will not agree. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I wrote that under this point because I know Katie and Garrett have their yeah. fancy bows. Also, I will canceling. say. I just have weird ears or something because the Apple ones just don't stay in my ears. Yeah. Mm. So I just don't use them. Yeah. I don't know what it is about the insides of my ears or your ears, but they're different. <laughs> they're made for Germany. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, part of my larger point though with all of this is that I hope what you've picked up from this is like with like the mouse. Oh yeah, uh, it's so variable. Pencil, yeah. trackpad thing, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's only three of us here, and all three of us chose a different thing. Yeah. And then yeah. with the headphones, uh, there's two different things we chose. Um, so, of course, it all is very dependent on where you're working and like what what resource what resources are available. But never feel self conscious about oh, I like it this way because that's totally valid. It's one of the things that was like, frankly, kind of frustrating for me originally when getting into animation is like. You, there was this animator you really looked up to and they were like, oh, I want this. I want the monitor stacked on top of each other and this and I have to have the app, this pencil for this and yeah, these yeah. headphones. Totally. And then this other animator is like, no, I like them side by side and I always use this mouse and blah, blah, blah. So all that to say, all that matters is the work on screen at the end yeah. of the day and however you Great feel day. most comfortable, there's no right or wrong it's way but about. but it's fun to talk about and to try <laughs> and to try these different things yeah. it's good yeah. to try too because yeah. like sometimes you don't know like yeah, yeah just give it totally. a shot like try yeah. to use the Cintiq pen if you i do still want to try that i i'll yeah. be honest i have not totally tried that out yeah. i feel like i haven't given it a fair shot but yeah i will say the like tablet uh like using just a tablet is also similar it doesn't oh, have to yeah. necessarily yeah. be a yeah. Cintiq but i'll say you usually have to be I'll say if there's a strategy behind like trying something new, I would say allow yourself two to three weeks to try yeah. something out where you're working oh, with it consistently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give it and a shot. And I think that's that's generally what we do with that. Uh, oh, for example, Katie recently started using X keys. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And Actually, it took a couple weeks. One I meant to right? mention in the physical, but we'd already like talked about. Oh god. Gotcha. So I was like, oh, skip it. Oh okay. But yeah, but I it really took a little while, it. right? Yeah. It wasn't like yeah. immediate. Yeah, now I, I bring them wherever I work. So yeah, so that's kind of the practical. You have to. So for example, I don't try anything new when we're like in crunch at work. Yeah. But during the slow times, where it kind of like I'm working on something, but the deadline's kind of like uh, malleable or, or flexible. That's when I'll kind of try to do different yeah, things with totally my workflow. Agree. Yeah. Um so I and I think you could do that in school as well. If it's like, yeah. okay, I just need to bang this out, get it done, stick to what feels good. Mm -hmm. Um if you kind of feel like you have a little time of flexibility, try something new and see you might like it. That's great. That's really good. Do you have any duds, Garrett? So Ooh. I didn't have any duds. I, I wrote duds slash overrated. Oh, oh my God. That, that counts. That's so, a dud. This is a little controversial, so it's kind of on the oh heels of God. what Ben uh, was talking about. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even fully agree with what I'm saying here either. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but so during like the, the pandemic, when we started working from home, um, basically my whole like workspace at home like shifted. And basically the point is I used to always work with two monitors and that was like always oh, essential yeah. for me. And now... I don't. I work with one monitor, at least at home, with my personal. Yeah. Monitor. Okay. With, at work, yeah. I have two computer, two uh, monitors, but I don't find it that essential. If you set your kind of like workspace up efficiently and you have good hotkeys and stuff, mm -hmm. you can get by with one monitor. If you like, there's like a hotkey in my to kind of like toggle between the cameras. I find it very. Oh yeah, I use that. You know what I'm yeah. talking about the camera switcher. Yeah. Um, I think even Anna might even have a, a script for that, but. Yeah. 
Um, I've been finding it okay, at least for my personal projects, to have one to get by with one monitor. However, that being said, it's I I do like having two monitors. Like, <laughs> so it's not really a, a good. Yeah. Good. No, I think up, that is good. Yeah, I you like can that. set up commands to like maximize and minimize windows, which I remember I got more into that during the pandemic, where there was more limited screen space. And yeah. I think that's a great one. That yeah. that. Fits under for me, yeah, like practical. working in the professional world is a mix of sticking to your guns and being flexible, <laughs> you know. And there's yeah. there's a lot of gray area in between, and um, I think that's a great one for being flexible. I frankly, I was the same way for the first, gosh, I don't know, probably two three years working in the industry. I was really obsessed with a tear off panel for my camera mm-hmm. in Maya. Yeah. Where I always had a second window open that was the camera. Yeah. And then the main window in Maya was just a perspective camera. Mm-hmm. And then when we like the pandemic happened or we went yeah. home and screen space was compromised, then I got into the using a hotkey to yeah. switch between perspective and camera. And now I actually prefer that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really so, yeah. 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 The performance. Yeah. It's handy. Although I still love my thirty eight inch yeah. <laughs> monitor. Yeah. <You're> <laughs> Uh, I don't yeah. know if I would voluntarily come back, <laughs> but yeah. no, I agree. It's it's not. It's absolutely a creature comfort and not a like a thing I can't live without. It's yeah. a thing I prefer to live with. Yeah. But <laughs> For that sure. being said, I feel like I've tried to work on laptops, like oh, using Maya sure. on a laptop. Yeah. I haven't been able to crack the code. I know, like you can yeah. do it, but I like having oh. a desktop with. Yeah. Oh gosh, that seems know. really tough. Yeah. yeah the uh. screen space. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's it's possible, sure. but yeah. Do you guys have any other duds? I think that Oh, I have some. Oh <laughs> I think that is a good time to transition to Katie. <laughs> <laughs> These are so silly that I'll be quick. One is the like Cintiq glove. Oh, that's good. There's a glove where it's like just <laughs> on your face ring finger and your pinky and it's basically so so that you can like slide (laughs) across the screen without like triggering a a response like a mouse response Uh. um and it makes you like look cool it's very similar (laughs) to like when i played lacrosse i like would wear a glove like gloves to like be intimidating but they gave me no like additional (laughs) functionality except for like maybe when it was cold it was nice to have them on but for the cintiq same thing. I I think I it's just that. like you don't think it has any. I, I, I mean, like it slightly, does. If you have kind of like a sweaty yeah. hand, it you're not it like does sweaty. help, but it was not habit forming. For oh me. yeah, yeah. I yeah, just yeah. like stopped is it, using it fairly immediately. Is it only for touch screen Cintiqs, or does it actually like? Is it supposed to prevent like the pen hitting it? Like, what's the it's, utility? Yeah, it's more like a like oh, touch screen functionality where gotcha. like, you don't want your skin to touch and like confuse the gotcha. contact. Yeah, um, and maybe slash I just don't like draw or use this antique enough to warrant it. But yeah, I like got it. I think I got a free one from Tomb Boom or something, and I was like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> and then I wore it like twice, and <laughs> I just like don't use it now. Yeah, that's- that was one. And then I'm I also kind of interested in them here mine? and there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah just for- or even just on the iPad. Sometimes it oh, like really heats up. You know? Okay. And, well, yeah. yeah, you can have it. I still have it. Oh, thanks. Uh, I also have like ergonomic gloves that are supposed to like help more with carpal tunnel or something, but okay. I, I don't wear them. I just <laughs> bought them off Amazon and yeah, I really don't wear them at all. And then um, this is another kind of related thing. I'm curious what you guys think because this was like such a hot topic. Blue light filtering glasses. Mm. I have them, but I just like, don't wear them consistently and I don't think I noticed like a huge difference. I think it's better for me to just like turn the lights down at the end of the day and mm. I don't know. I, yeah. I definitely don't wear them while animating. Um, the glasses you wear at work aren't normal, are, are not blue light filter? They are, but I don't wear them while I'm animating oh. very often because they like squeeze against my headphones. It's like such a like basic mm. thing. 
Um, O-M-G. I just don't really wear them. I wear them at dailies because I think they make me look smarter. Yeah. But, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and like trendier. Yeah. But I... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, while I'm animating, I'll put them on for a bit, and then I'm like, "Oh no, they're like squeezing my temples because of my noise canceling headphones." But it, <laughs> it's the utility of them. It's the like the dis- yeah, it's like maybe maybe it's my head. We might have discovered <laughs> this one. Okay, so I was actually going to the conversation kind of moved on, but I was going to list this under the physical. Oh, thing. Your glasses. I love my blue light filtering. Oh, and I, I have close to 20-20 vision, but it just makes things sh- like slightly sharper and crisper okay. on, on the computer. And I do not wear the headphones that press them against my head. I wear the basic like, Apple uh, ones. So I wonder uh, if that's like why. Winner. But I no, but. not the win- no, we, we both are. But you're the headphones winner. I'm the glasses winner. But um, it's interesting. Yeah, I do wear my glasses. Same thing. I have close to twenty twenty, but like the optometrist showed me I could have slightly sharper vision. So I have some glasses that I will wear to meetings and demonstrations because when people demo stuff in animation software on the computer, it's like tiny. Oh, yeah. Um, so I wear it for that. But yeah, while I'm animating, I, I don't wear them. Yeah. That's interesting. interesting. I feel Where like... You don't, f- or go ahead. I don't think my glasses are like blue light filtering, but I definitely like on my personal computer and stuff have those like apps that yes make, that exactly filter it out or whatever. it's like oh, yeah. better for me to structurally build it in like after 8 yeah. p.m you yeah can, you can turn like it that. to like more of yeah. a yellow light or something I, gotcha yeah, I think mac might even have that integrated into the Got, ios oh yeah uh, i think you're right yeah. even the phones i'm sure it's better actually to have like a gl- the glasses so it's like guaranteed but i haven't that's interesting i haven't even like thought about that yeah really. i mean maybe it's just because i didn't grow up wearing glasses at all yeah. so it's just like hard to form that it's habit, funny but... neither did i it just i <laughs> i feel like i wore them at work just enough to get like addicted to them so now like when oh, when i different. go to work and i don't have them there even though go. i different don't people. necessarily need them i'm like you're scott you're farsighted or i mean i know it sounds like uh, it's late anyways i would be <laughs> it's okay I think I would lean toward f- slightly nearsighted. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Does that- I'm very nearsighted. <laughs> oh, yeah? So I have contacts in right now. Yeah. Okay. Are they blue light filtering? I don't think... I don't know if contacts can be. <laughs> can? They? No, no. Okay. I don't know, actually. I don't know. Either, I don't think actually. they are. Because oh, I, okay. I remember when you get glasses, you can like pick out more expensive lenses to do yeah. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. The contacts are not the case. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. But like, as far as like promising, like you're going to have the best sleep of your life, like I don't oh, think yeah. it translated to that. Actually, I would agree with that. <laughs> Because, well, you just heard, I wear them, Katie doesn't. Katie's generally better about going to sleep <laughs> than I am. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. That's all I had. Do you guys have anything else? No. That's it. Should we does move on? That bring a, does that bring us? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that makes sense. Does that bring us to the tip jar? <laughs> That's how those words work. Woo! Ching, so, ching, 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 ching. This tip jar is kind of special, actually. It's <gasps> not a normal tip. <gasps> what it's is it? It's not a tip at all, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a um we're going to be responding to some listener mail Woo, so listener got mail tip jar. Yeah. we got about. a really nice email from a listener jenny m Shout and she here i'll just read it um i won't paraphrase it because i'll be better to read it <laughs> <laughs> she says i started art in 2020 but only recently took it seriously I want to become an animator, and I intend to apply to some schools with an animation degree. I live in France. So there's a lot of them. Do you guys know what to put in a portfolio for school animation? Do I have to put some animation or a demo reel in it? And then she added, because to be honest, I don't think I'm good enough, which oh. we wanted to respond to right away. Um, and yeah, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. First off, I'll just reply right away. There's no good or bad. It's all about the work you put in and and your passion and uh, potential. I'm sure, like, I can just tell from, like, the thought you put into this email that you're somebody who seems to care a lot. So I I have the utmost faith that you are good enough and, like, you just need, you know, the access to the teaching and the resources um, and you'll get there. But, yeah, let's talk about 
the demo reel or yeah, what are your guys' immediate thoughts or portfolio? Garrett's pointing at me, so I'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I agree with what Katie's saying. I will say, go make it, first of all, awesome that you're thinking about this and first started art in 2020 and just now are getting like serious about it. That's still a fairly quick turnaround compared to yeah. a lot of people. So kudos to you for putting action behind kind of those feelings you have. Um, go ahead and I would say make a list of the colleges you're interested in applying to and specifically look on all of those colleges' websites because most of them are pretty good about saying kind of exactly what is needed in a portfolio. Um, so listen to those, of course. But off the top of my head, I would say animation is probably not required, especially if it's an undergraduate program. There's just not a ton of people doing like mm -hmm. animation, animation um, in like grade school or high school. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's widely required or expected at all. My sense is they'll probably ask for like drawings you've done or a sketchbook yeah. or illustrations or whatever. And in those cases, especially if it's undergrad or whatever, again, look at the requirements on the website. But anything you have is probably quote unquote good enough, whether it's like doodles in a notebook or, or life drawing or life drawing or whatever you have. If you like drawing caricatures or, or mm -hmm. silly animals or whatever, just put whatever you have in there. I, yeah. I don't think you have to feel a whole lot of pressure right now necessarily um, to have like a very specific looking reel. Maybe there would be a couple colleges where they would like to see a little bit of animation. If you're open to that, <laughs> go for it. Uh, but don't let that be a barrier to you, I'd say, and focus on the ones that don't require it and, and just submit your drawings or whatever. Um, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. I, I don't know. Did she specify whether it was like 2D animation or CG? Um, oh, good question. Not here. Okay. I do wonder, yeah, for France, if it would be more 2D, 3D, 3D but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. No, I, I feel like, Ben, what you said was like really great with like looking up the the websites of all those colleges and stuff and seeing what they're applying for. I feel like the immediate thing I thought of was, um, I mean, in an ideal world, I feel like colleges and stuff would be looking for potential, you know, like, yeah. so yeah. it's, it's not your technique or your execution necessarily. I mean, I, I don't know if this is the case, but that's like my, just me thinking pie in the sky. Yeah. So it'd be just like your ideas, I feel like mm -hmm. are the strong, mm -hmm. I mean, that's like always what I kind of like, you know, tell people is like the ideas are the, the most important thing. And then don't worry about like if your drawings are, are bad or something, but if you're like kind of the heart behind them are strong, I feel like good colleges or, or universities would see your mm -hmm. potential possibly. Mm -hmm. Um, but with CG, I would say like, it would probably be cool if you maybe showed some sort of, um, kind of, technical ability with like Maya or something. Cause it, it is a little bit, the tool is unfortunately just something you kind of like need to know, but I think you could learn that in school. So I, I don't mm. know, but I feel like the, the main takeaway for me would be just, yeah, like the potential, your kind of thought process, your idea, um, rather than the actual, like if your anatomy is perfect. Um, yeah. Cause um, I don't think yeah. that's what you're learning in school, right? Is like the totally. anatomy and all yeah. that stuff. Sure. Yeah. What you said about Maya reminds me of, um, I feel like it's one of those things where it would just be a bonus, but it's not at all required where it kind of shows like, oh, you took some initiative on your own to like really dive into something animation related. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, not at all required, but it could be something that like stands out or whatever. But um, I'm thinking back to when I applied to SCAD's MFA program, I'm trying to remember what I had on my portfolio and <laughs> I don't think it was that great. It was a lot of, <laughs> I've scrambled, I think over like a few weeks to put something together. I had like, um, some rough drawings of like, I drew my brother, I drew my sister's dog and, I just had like all these random drawings and then I like threw together this really, really amateur storyboard 
Um, and I, and I, since I was kind of interested in stop motion, I, I hobbled together a couple puppets and like roughly animated them. Um, but yeah, everything was, I mean, if I look at it back at it now, it was all like definitely very, uh, beginner amateur level, but I think like to Garrett's point, it just showed potential and showed ideas, um, and some passion. So I think that was like the most important thing to get across as opposed to like actually having any animation or a demo reel. Um, I probably threw in a stop motion short I did in college, that sort of thing. But yeah, again, it was all like very beginner level. So um, I do think, yeah, potential was the most important thing. For sure. Yeah. Garrett, what, how about for the NYU film program? What sort of stuff did that require? That so it's a little weird for me because I went to in high school. I actually took a summer program uh, at NYU. Oh, oh. Later towards the and it was a little bit of like a way. Like if you could go to the summer program, you could get accepted into that. Gotcha. You, mm-hmm. you kind of like primed the pump a little bit. Yeah, but, gotcha. It primed the pump a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> What is that? <laughs> That's not like an inappropriate. It just, I don't know, it just weird. reminded me of wet your willy. <laughs> <laughs> you wet your willy. With oh my god! Pool. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I feel like. It, that's kind of what made what it made me think of is because I remember in that program, like um, the film I made out of that summer program was I, you know, I of course I look back at it and I cringe. Oh, However, yeah. there was like a theme there. There, was, I was going for something and. The theme in my like, kind of like emo stage of life yeah. was like, oh, do I become an artist or do I go the traditional route? That was like the theme oh yeah, film. oh nice. And it was I'm very, still trying to figure that. Out. <laughs> <laughs> it was very melodramatic, but like it it was real to me at the time. Sure. And I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I I ended up getting accepted and stuff, and I think maybe there was some they, they saw that like okay, like I'm trying to say something, you know, maybe my yeah. technique is really. Yeah lame and and bad but um i'm like trying to i'm trying to do something so yeah i think awesome that's kind of why i feel strongly i feel like a good school might just be like you know what are you trying to say what do you what's your idea um and i mean personally i would yeah that's how i would if i were like reviewing i'd be like i don't really care if you're not yeah the best like artist or whatever i would just look at your ideas yeah i wonder what do you guys think about like if somebody were to draw or emulate existing characters or franchises? Cause mm. my like somewhat of my instinct is that there's somewhat of a negative bias against somebody like emulating yeah. existing characters or manga or like copying something. Um, Cause yeah, I do think kind of the ideas and potential is more, but maybe for a school it's not as frowned upon. I think it's more frowned upon when you're like, applying to jobs in the industry because but i don't know what do you what's your guys take Mm. on that that's a really good question short answer is i don't know yeah (laughs) longer answer is my thought is the same as you whereas i I feel like there might be a little bit of a bias against it even at the school level if maybe if it's it's what you're really into i i don't I don't know that it's terrible to have a couple examples of that if you like yeah. really like doing that stuff, but I would maybe try to have maybe not have a whole portfolio that's yeah. just that stuff. Yeah, I think it stems back to what we're talking about. Like you wanna show that you have ideas and potential. So like copying something is more of like a technical skill, I guess. But yeah. I feel like yeah. yeah, copying can kind of it can be really useful to copy other people to like learn, yeah. learn technique yeah, and yeah. stuff. Almost, mo- but that is more like technique. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, your own ideas. I think that's not showcasing that. So, yeah. but th- then it, that's kind of where it goes back to the school. And specifically, if maybe if it's more of a, a technical type school, yeah. maybe they would be like, oh, wow, you could really yeah. emulate this artist. That's like <laughs> kind of cool. I yeah. Don't, but yeah, I don't, it's hard to know. Like, yeah. It is. I imagine it's really different based on the school you're applying to. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a really good question. Like I Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know where I land. I guess I would like proceed with caution, maybe. Or make yeah, sure it's yeah, yeah sure. like you were saying, not the majority of your portfolio. Yeah. Yeah, you never I feel like this almost puts too much pressure on, but I I would say you don't necessarily ever want to look like the second best version of something. Which like oh, if you're doing yeah. 
you know, a well-known character or whatever, yeah. you're, of course, then immediately going to be compared to whatever widely available version of that is. Yeah. So, you know, if you build your own rig that looks like Woody, that's an ex- extreme example. <laughs> but, right, right. You know, um, yeah. But I, I feel like we're all saying the same thing, which is like, it's not a death note to yeah. something that's like kind of in the style of something else or kind of a, an homage or copy of something, but definitely do your own thing as well. And you know, do like what you love, like, mm-hmm. or do yeah. like whatever feels right for you, like, and that you enjoy doing, do that. Because I feel like at least in my experience going to film school, I felt like I lost a bit of my myself where I was trying to cater to like what I think people would think was cool or You know, like, Um, and I think you just do, you just want to impress other people. Like, so I guess like my advice would be kind of like, try to just do things that you like. And if it is like drawing birds or lizards or whatever, like just kind of lean into that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm with you. I would, I would say if you, if you find yourself emulating something almost like look into why you're doing that. Like, it's yes. like, okay, oh, I really love uh, the Ice Age movies. I want to do, like, um, Sid the Sloth or Manny or whatever. Okay, well, do you really mean you really like that style? Because that means you probably really like the artist Peter DeSev because he, you know, designed those characters. And maybe you do a character... Peter DeSev hasn't done or that is not in the Ice Age movies, but it can still be an homage to that sort of thing. You know, you can let it inspire you and kind of do your own thing. But, you know, I don't know that he's, there's been a widely available design of his that is an anteater, you know, maybe you do that or something. But so, yeah, it's a fine line. I I don't want to say like you can't be inspired and want to do things that are in a similar vein, but, you know, try to do your own thing with it. The last thing I'll add is just like if you feel like you don't have a body of work to submit, there is nothing wrong with taking a class online and like building. Yeah, good point. Um, I don't know if you're in high school, you could take something over the summer or um, I just took a class with Peter Hahn. He's an amazing artist and it was just Wednesdays for a few hours at night Um. And it went for like 10 weeks or something. And I, I took it very casually. I, I, he has two versions. One is like the more expensive version where he gives you feedback and, uh, and there's a less expensive version where you just sit in. <laughs> so I did the sit in version and it, I didn't always do the homework, <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but I did do a good amount and I learned a lot. Um, so like you could totally do something like that and it, it's not too crazy expensive um, just to like build your portfolio. There's, you know, Bobby Chu runs Schoolism that runs a lot of art art classes online. And, yeah. uh, and there's so much free content out there on YouTube also. So, um, you know, maybe you spend a few months on it, but it could be well worth it. And don't, yeah, don't let it stop you. <laughs> if yeah. you feel like you're not ready, that's fine. You can, you can just keep chipping away at it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great. I love that you just said, don't let it stop you. <laughs> one, one thing I wanted to add was just like, do, you don't have to be your own limiting factor. If yeah. you really want to apply to these different schools or whatever, just apply. <laughs> like it's fine. Yeah. And you can reapply. If yes, work out exactly. The first time. If they tell you no, I promise you schools don't hold grudges. <laughs> <laughs> they, they want you to be able to go there. Um, yeah. so, um, yeah, if you're feeling you're like, you're not good enough or whatever, you know, it's fine to listen to those feelings and try to get better. Um, but don't let it go into the realm of, Oh, I'm totally discouraged. Now I'm going to shut myself off. Yeah. Uh, still, still go for it. Yeah, pra- yeah. It it's hard when you're young to like realize how much practice people do and um how much time it takes and to like yeah. we talked about this before. It took me a really long time to um unlearn the uh fixed the fixed or growth mindset where you fix growth fixed mindset is you think people are just naturally good or bad at things. Mm. And the growth mindset is that you realize um, how good someone is at something is dependent on how much work they put in. And um, so I, yeah, I encourage you to think about that. And um, 
Yeah, don't don't tell yourself you're not good enough. I'm sure I'm sure you have lots to offer. <laughs> For That's sure. The luck, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's keep us updated. Yeah. 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 And before we wrap, we would love to thank our new monthly subscribers. We have two. We have um, Samir and Abhijit. And I apologize if I said your name wrong. <laughs> but we are so, so grateful for you. Thank you. It really warms our heart whenever we see a new tip come in. Um, and yeah, and if anyone's curious, you can find the tip jar link uh, on our website on the show notes and and start a monthly subscription there but yeah thank you guys thank you and uh is that is that i think that about does it right that was our tip jar so yeah general social media plug oh yeah why do you guys want to do it or do you want me to oh man katie is always so good at (laughs) yeah you know what i'm gonna say guys follow us on instagram (laughs) animation (laughs) um and uh you know check out our website we have a lot of resources actually we i remember a while ago we did so much research on those resources it's like i think it was mostly i feel like it was mostly you katie I don't know. Oh, maybe yeah. I borrowed a lot from Natalie Nurget too. Shout out. <laughs> just like we have so much stuff. Maybe it's a little outdated now, but I don't know. Check it out. Um, we have an email, animationhappyhour at gmail dot com. Um, yeah, yeah. We still have our t shirt <laughs> website. I think Threadless is. Oh website. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you can get our logo printed on a t shirt, <laughs> tote bag, whatever you want. Um, I think when someone buys a t-shirt, we make like $2 or something. But hey, hey we hey, love it. That's something. <laughs> yeah. We just we appreciate the support. <laughs> and uh, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, this has been Garrett, Ben, and Katie. Thanks for listening and happy animating.